Thank you so much, Colin, for being here. I really appreciate it. Sure. So you are the international pitch winner for the MedTech Innovator event. Congratulations, first and foremost. Thank you very much. Second, will you take a moment and introduce yourself? Certainly. Well, I was delighted to win the competition in uh, 2017. It was fantastic for us. Uh, my name is Colin McGarvey. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cilio Medical, which is an early stage medical device company based here in Dublin and Ireland. And uh, we develop a novel technology for eliminating a very common and costly complication associated with lung biopsy. Excellent. Did you develop an interest in technology at an early age, or was there a specific event in your life that led you to the medical device industry? I'm going to say I, I always had an interest in technology from, from my youth, I guess, from the early days of Atari and BBC computers and my scale electrics and playing with all those things. And subsequently going to college and doing a degree in pharmacy, I, I think I married my interest both in healthcare and in technology. And then even recently with personal experiences with the bereavement, unfortunately, in the family through cancer, it really, I suppose, developed and strengthened my passion to develop a technology which would help patients' lives. Out of tragedy comes beauty, exactly, in my opinion, so. um, and I feel for you as well. Uh, who did you look to in your early career for inspiration? I think through the more recent years uh, of our development in the medical technology sector, I think I've certainly looked to some of the leading lights in Ireland in medical device entrepreneurship, like Paul Gilson, who's founded two really successful medical device companies in Novata and Mednova, also Eamon Brady with his fantastic successes through Neuravi, and maybe the likes of John O'Shaughnessy as well, who's been involved in both of those companies. So we're quite lucky in Ireland to have a lot of fantastic leaders, you know, who we can look to for, you know, that I suppose support and I suppose the I suppose also the confidence that we can also do that and replicate their success. That's wonderful that you're leaning on your community. So let's talk about Celio Medical for a minute. What's the story behind Celio? Sure. So I'll bring you back to 2014, 2015, when myself and my co-founder met during our BioInnovate Fellowship, which is a partner of Stanford Biodesign. And during that program, uh, we were on a multidisciplinary team. Garrett was the biomedical engineer. I was there as this was the pharmacist and the commercial expert. And we were identifying unmet needs. And one day we identified and observed a lung biopsy procedure being carried out in the hospital. And unfortunately, the patient suffered a collapsed lung known as a pneumothorax and had to be admitted into the hospital for four days to treat that. And we thought, like, here's a, a standard outpatient procedure which is leading to a very serious complication. Surely there's a better way of doing this which can improve the patient's quality of care. And, and from that, you know, we'd research this need, research the, I suppose, the physiology and the, research the market, and we then came up with a concept, and since then we've been developing the technology. That seems like a story as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the concept, you have the market research backing up, you have the need in the industry, now it's time to develop your team. Sure. What was your number one priority when you developed that team initially? I guess we really were looking for and needed to have a mix of talents and looking really at you know knowledge, of the sector expertise in this particular area i think more importantly then you know the passion you know to actually to solve this problem and to get this technology developed and in the hands of patients and clinicians who actually need it and so from that we pretty assembled a world-class team of advisors around us to support us you know through that journey so talk me through the journey from diagnosis of the patient to the implanted technology sure so I think we look about the, the patient journey effectively. So once a patient, I suppose, visits a general practitioner with, you know, maybe coughing up blood or a suspected potential lung cancer, and the, the general practitioner sends them for an X-ray or a CT scan, at that stage then the clinicians decide, look, you know, to get a definitive diagnosis, and the gold standard of lung cancer diagnosis is a biopsy to get that tissue. And at that stage then the patient is invited in the patient department to have a lung biopsy carried out. And and, and then our technology is actually used before that lung biopsy procedure is carried out. So all previous interventions have been a post-biopsy attempt to solve this problem, whereas we actually prevent the problem happening before the biopsy even takes place. So uh, I guess that's the journey from start to finish of the procedure. So what I'm hearing is that you're trying to end that journey in half for improved patient care. Very much so, yeah. That's fascinating, and I'm, I, I want to explore that a little bit more. 
so it's before the biopsy that sure. you come into play. Exactly. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, very happy to. So the a pneumothorax, a collapsed lung, happens when the biopsy needle punctures the lung. Just consider the lung as a balloon, as an air-filled structure, and unfortunately once you put a needle in there, air is going to escape and that lung will collapse. So we've looked at and researched the literature on all previous attempts to solve the problem, and they've always involved trying to fill that hole in the lung after the biopsy procedure, effectively hole fillers, for lack of a better term. So we thought, look, why don't we try and solve this problem right at the start, before it actually happens? So we're pre-sealing that access route into the lung with our novel device and our novel hydrogel, and then the biopsy is carried out through our airtight seal, and that prevents any air leak from the lung either during or after the procedure. I'm completely unsurprised why you are a MedTech Innovator alumni. <laughs> I would have absolutely voted for you. Looking ahead, what is Celio Medical's priorities for 2018? I guess our two major priorities now for the rest of this year, having completed a lot over this last two years, are to finalize our initial Series A fundraising to allow us to continue on the journey. And as part of that then, to arrange and finalize our first demand clinical study, uh, which, we, which we intend to do by 2019. Understood, so you're looking for more strategic partnerships. Exactly, we're looking for further funding to allow us to continue with our, our research and development and our ongoing commercialization. So then what are you looking for in a strategic partner? I guess from a strategic partnership, uh, we'd be looking for someone who has the, I suppose, the skill and the ability and the expertise to bring a product to market. So someone who has that call point with the radiologist who carries out the procedures, uh, has that breadth right across the markets that we want to penetrate. Would you describe the, how the culture of Celio Medical has changed since this time last year? <laughs> it's changed a lot. <laughs> Looking back already over this last two or three years, it's changed dramatically. So initially, uh, myself and Garat, my co-founder, we were, we were in the mode of needs finding. So we were frantically running around hospitals, observing procedures to see like, where are the problems that we can actually invent a technology for. And since, since that has happened, we've identified a very much prove an unmet need and we've got a technology to solve that need we're now very much in execution mode so you know we've got a very clear defined plan as to how to get this product to market and really the pressure now is just to execute each of those milestones to get there. Uh, what advice would you give to other MedTech Innovator finalists who are trying to get the title of alumni like yourself? I guess the advice I would give would be to, to really leverage off the fantastic resources that MedTech Innovator put in place as part of the program and there's a fantastic community that they put together of you know really experienced uh, corporates in that world, the likes of Baxter and J and J and BD, who we had fantastic mentors from those companies, and all the advisors that they have, that they put together a real strong network of advisors. And personally, I saw this as a fantastic opportunity, and I was I, I, I made ensure to make the most of that and reach out to everyone who was there and really to put all my effort into it to get as much as I can. That would be the advice I would give you. It's like everything else, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. I could have said it better myself. I want to take these final moments to pass you the spotlight column and share with our audience about Celio Medical, what you want us to know, and maybe last thoughts or lessons learned. Sure. So within Celio Medical, we're, we're really excited that we have a novel technology which can really make a big difference in patients' quality of care. Not only that, that it can also solve a, a real unmet clinical need for clinicians. And on top of that will lead to significant cost savings in the healthcare system. So, you know, we're reaching out to partners who wish to join us on that journey and to help us to get this product to market. Best of luck and thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Thank you.